Hi everyone, this is the Canadian Lad, and today I've watched Falcon the Winter Soldier episode 5 at 0.2 Fabric Speed. As usual, this is a complete breakdown plus my 0.2 Fabric Speed series. Today's episode is probably the best one in the show yet, so I have a lot to cover here. But don't worry, for your convenience, I'll try to keep it as relevant as possible without beating around the bush. So without any further ado, let's begin. Today's episode begins as expected with this massive fight inside the warehouse. Initially, John assumes that Sam and Bucky are still on his team, until Sam and Bucky ask for the shield back. But John takes it personally and becomes totally unhinged. I didn't expect John to try and kill Sam with the shield in the first seven minutes of the episode. As a matter of fact, he tried to kill both of them. He's completely over the edge at this point. Now lads, no matter how much you disagree, I really think Wyatt Russell is stealing every scene he's in. Let me ask you a question. If John is there in a scene along with some other characters, who are you paying most attention to? It's him, isn't it? He's one hell of an actor and I think we as Marvel fans should be proud of that. Now coming to this fight sequence, this was so well done. We we knew at all times where the characters were, we were not confused because of the fast camera movement, overall this was great direction and awesome camera work. Now at the end of the fight, Bucky just simply drops the shield for Sam and gives a painful look. As if he's saying, look what you've done, you could have prevented this. This also shows how he still thinks Sam is the only one worthy to wield the shield. But the painful moment was this defeated look on Sam's face. He told John before the fight, you made a mistake. But now while wiping the blood, Sam realizes he also made a mistake by giving up the shield in the first place. Almost like he's trying to wipe away the guilt, because had he not given away the shield, this moment wouldn't have occurred. He feels responsible for John's actions, and how it corrupted the legacy of his friend Steve. The look on Anthony's face in this scene, boy that hits different, doesn't it? Now the GRC is conducting raids in order to find Carly, but so far they have only caught her followers. We see Joaquin Taurus for the first time since episode 2, and this is the first thing he says. Hey, you got your, uh, you got your sleeve back referencing this scene where Bucky casually took his sleeve off. Bucky then goes on to take care of Zemo, while Marvel plans another seed for something incredibly big. Wait, yo, you forgot the wings. Cable. So what did we just witness here? Sam had the options to choose to either be Falcon or Captain America, or maybe both at the same time. But he chose the shield, giving the wings to Taurus, therefore giving us the new Falcon in the MCU. Well, maybe not now, but down the years, we'll definitely see him taking the mantle of Falcon just like he did in the comics. Not to forget, we already saw him suggesting Sam how to fix his own tech in episode one. You could try to reroute that to the other. Did you not? Oh. <laughs> So they were always foreshadowing him taking on the mantle of Falcon. The government then decides to take away all sorts of titles and privileges from John Walker. I really do feel bad for Walker here. He's doing exactly what the government wants from him, and they're still treating him like a pile of trash. I'm pretty sure had he killed his Flag Smasher privately, this situation would have been totally different. But this government doesn't like the idea of Cap being an open killer. Now notice John acknowledges that he literally worshipped the government. I live my life by your mandates. I dedicated my life to your mandate. It's actually true, but he's still being treated like trash just like Steve was in Civil War. So this situation with the government is really complicated. Whether you're fighting for them or against them, they will still wind up plotting against you. This moment is going to be a big inspiration for John to turn against the government and work for some other force. Which brings us to surprise surprise, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, aka Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Actually, it's Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Now this Valentina Allegra de Fontaine is not the traditional green-haired Madame Hydra. This is Contessa Vell, Nick Fury's triple agent girlfriend, which is a much more interesting character than just another Hydra leader. Valentina is not really Hydra in the comics. She just poses as Madame Hydra for a while, but eventually betrays them. So buckle up lads, this is gonna be mind-blowing. We now have an evil Captain America and an evil Nick Fury. Now if you wanna know her backstory, it goes something like this. In the comics, Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine is an Italian noble woman who joined S.H.I.E.L.D. and even ascended temporarily to the rank of deputy director, becoming Nick Fury's lover. Eventually, she infiltrated Hydra and assumed the identity of Madame Hydra, though she was actually a triple agent since before being recruited by S.H.I.E.L.D. Now notice, for some reason, Marvel decided to give her a full purple outfit. Even some streaks on her hair are purple. I guess we'll only figure this out in the future. Bucky finds Zemo at the Sokovia Memorial statue, and he scares him for a minute by pulling the trigger on an unloaded gun. If you've been watching the trailer, we pretty much knew it was coming. Bucky was never going to shoot. In fact, the moment he showed up here, he always had his left hand closed like a fist, giving him 
hint that the bullets were always in his hands. Therefore, for the first time, he actually outsmarted Zemo. At least for the time being. Unless in the future we come to know that Zemo was always expecting Bucky to hand him over to Dora Milaje. Now notice, in the first look of the show, there were flowers and letters all over the statue. But in today's episode, they were missing. Actually, if you look at the surroundings, the entire place has been redesigned since the trailer. The Dora Milaje then takes Zemo to the raft. Now this is interesting. Instead of taking him to Wakanda, they're literally handing him off to Ross. Because if you remember, the raft is basically General Ross's playground. The raft is an underwater prison created for the sole purpose of detaining enhanced individuals. This is where Cap's team was imprisoned in Civil War. Now it's almost certain that Marvel is going towards Thunderbolts. Ross will now be able to use Zemo to acquire his own team of villains. I feel like this needs a video of its own, so I'll probably talk about it in a separate video. Sam then goes on to visit Isaiah Bradley with the shield, not knowing what to do with it. But the story Marvel tells here really breaks my heart. Unlike the last time, Isaiah actually sat down and told Sam everything he has to know. Now I'm not gonna explain this scene as I want you to have your own interpretation. If you think Marvel is being woke or shoving politics down our throats, this is exactly the problem here. It's not about being liberal or conservative, it's about what's right. And if a studio as big as Marvel is at least acknowledging the oppression against black people, I think we should welcome that, whether we are from the right or left. Think about this, Isaiah Bradley did the exact same thing as Steve Rogers but was hated for it. Steve became a hero saving the prisoners of war. That's when the military started to take him seriously. But when Isaiah did the same, he was literally jailed for 30 years, just for this one reason. They will never let a black man be Captain America. And please don't think they put him in jail because they thought he broke the law. They put him in jail so that they can experiment on him to figure out why the serum worked. So they can put the serum on someone else who doesn't look like him. I mean, politics aside, this is worse than killing someone. They told his wife that he is dead and didn't let any of her letters reach him. They would have probably kept him longer than 30 years if it wasn't for a nurse who felt bad. So in all honesty, this is by far one of the most realistic scenes in the MCU. And most of what Isaiah says to Sam during this scene is very similar to the events of Truth, Red, white and black, which is why this episode is called Truth. Now here we assume that the events Isaiah described took place during the Korean War rather than World War II. Sam then calls his sister and says he's coming home. But notice Sam's home screen has a picture of someone standing beside a kid. This could be an old picture of Sam with his late father. Or it could be him and one of his nephews. Cut to Louisiana where Sam now has to fix the boat in order to sell it. Sam decides to call in a few favors earned by the generosity of their parents. And he gets surprised when people actually show up to return the favor. And there we see Bucky, who came here to drop this box. Just like Sam called in a few favors, Bucky used his favors from the Wakandans for Sam. Isn't this something you'd only do for your friend? And meanwhile, Bucky gets busy doing this. I'm Bucky. Sam. Sam. This scene reminds us that Bucky was always a ladies' man. We then get a little montage of Sam and Bucky working together to fix the boat. Now if you think about it, this boat is a metaphor for everything that is wrong in Sam and Bucky's life. Them working together to fix the boat is literally them fixing their own friendship. Now notice at one point Bucky uses a tool to sharpen his knife skills. He does a little bit of stabbing and throwing. <laughs> anyway, Bucky decides to stay the night because the people of this town are super nice. John visits Lamar's parents and lies about the killer of Lamar. Nico was the one who killed Lamar. John is still in denial, but this means once he comes back to his senses, he will go after Carly, who is the actual killer of Lamar. Because John did say, And I would never let the person who did that get away. He then walks out and sees an old poster of himself that says Cap is back. This of course shows how the tables have turned for his character. But notice the color coding in the poster and the lighting on the set were intentionally kept like this. Because now it foreshadows John Walker's black outfit that he will wear once he becomes the US agent. Because remember, nothing you see in a movie or a show is unintentional. Especially the lighting. Directors always make sure they're getting the proper lighting they're looking for. Cut to Sharon who's talking to Batroc over the phone, giving him a new mission. But if you listen carefully, Batroc actually says in French that he'll never work for Sharon again. The keyword here is again, meaning he has worked for her before. And she also says if it wasn't for her, he would still rot in Algerian prison. This explains why Batroc was running free in episode 1. Because during the events of Captain America the Winter Soldier, Batroc was actually apprehended in Algeria. But Sharon was the one who freed him. And now she's hiring him for yet another job. Later in the episode, we come to know that Batroc is now helping the Flag Smashers by giving them weapons. So Sharon, an advocate for Power Broker, hired Batroc so that he helps the Flag 
tax measures, Sharon is definitely playing double agent here. Well, I think she's beyond that at this point, but she definitely has bigger fish to fry, and that's why she's helping her enemy. I think her goal here is to attack the GRC and enter the states. She's just manipulating Batroc and Carly by creating an illusion that she is helping. Coming back to Louisiana, Bucky smiles seeing Sam's nephew playing around with the shield. So Bucky realizes what the shield means to people, despite what John did with it. Bucky was worrying that this incident will destroy Steve's legacy, but this boy's playing with the shield ensured Bucky that Steve's legacy cannot be erased. Which brings us to Sam and Bucky now playing with the shield, while having a conversation that really brings a clarity to their lives. Bucky admits that him and Steve had no idea what it meant to hand over the shield to a black man. When Steve told me what he was planning, I don't think either of us really understood what it felt like for a black man to be handed the shield. And notice, as soon as Bucky said it, Sam breathes a sigh of relief, because Bucky now understands why Sam gave away the shield in the first place. This also confirms that Steve had some serious talk with Bucky before going back in time to return the stones. Steve consulted Bucky before taking such big decisions, his decision to stay back in time with the love of his life and to pass the shield to Sam. We always knew that, but it was never confirmed until now. Now, I have found a very subtle detail here. We know Sam and Bucky are casually throwing the shield and playing around, but none of them are really that expert in wielding the shield yet. So how do they decide whether the shield will come back to them or their partner? I think I found the answer after watching it at 0.25 x speed. Notice when they want the shield to come straight back to them, they aim for the center. But when they want the shield to go back to their partner, they aim for slightly away from the center, which results in this slight diversion. So you may ask why am I counting this as a detail? Because this whole thing is mostly CGI. So the fact that the VFX team took their time to ensure such little detail, we have to appreciate that. Now another thing to notice here is how much Bucky trusts Sam. When Sam asks Bucky if he still has those nightmares, the nightmares of all the murders that he did. Bucky simply says, All the time. It means I remember. It means a part of me is still there. Which means a part of the Winter Soldier is still in me. This means Sam is the therapist Bucky needed. He's the one who actually explains the difference between a mending and avenging. Sam encourages Bucky to go up to Nakajima and say sorry. Bucky, on the other hand, tells Sam that whatever John did wasn't Sam's mistake. So this is a conversation Sam and Bucky both needed. Thankfully, the boat got them together, which made this conversation possible. And this is my favorite scene in the episode. They're walking away from each other in different directions, but they're finally on the same path. Then we get the moment we've all been waiting for. Sam finally starts to accept the shield and begins training with it. We get an epic montage, and again I found an amazing attention to detail. Notice when Sam throws the shield on a post and it comes back to him, it leaves a mark on the post after hitting it, and you can only see it for less than a second. Again, another great job by the VFX team. Because remember, any scenes of throwing the shield or the shield hitting something involves extreme level of CGI. We then see Batroc teaming up with the Flag Smashers, but all he wants is to kill the Falcon. Curly, of course, doesn't know Batroc has been sent by Sharon. By the way, didn't I say Batroc will appear in today's episode in my last video? So that turned out to be correct as well. Sam then comes to know that the Flag Smashers are gonna attack the GRC to prevent the Patch Act from being implemented, and that's exactly what happens. Members of the Flag Smashers infiltrate the GRC disguised as security guards. We could actually see one of them entering the facility on the big screen. Cuts back to Sam who's now preparing to put on his new suit made with vibranium technology. I think it's a suit more or less like Black Panthers, so he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Super Soldier. Soldiers. Sam, of course, is highly skilled in combat, but he's still no match for a super soldier, let alone an army of super soldiers. So I totally understand why Marvel decided to give him a suit made with Wakandan technology. This could also mean if his new suit has wings, those could be made out of vibranium. Hell, the entire suit could be vibranium, which will mean Sam is gonna have the best stealth suit in the world. And then we get our first post credit scene of the show. John Walker goes full Tony Stark in order to build his own version of the shield. One thing I loved about this scene is that John literally puts his Medal of Honor to some use, because now he thinks the medals are worthless, so may as well put them to use. It comes a full circle with how he told the government that you built me, and now he's using something from the government to build his own weapon. Uh, um, shield. Uh, I mean, weapon. So this shield isn't gonna be ordinary either. Even though it's not vibranium, it still has a Medal of Honor embedded into it. And how do I know this isn't vibranium? Because John wouldn't be able to hammer through vibranium that easily. And if you think about it, John actually doesn't need a shield made of vibranium. He almost defeated Sam and Bucky at the warehouse all by himself. Himself. And I've been saying this since the beginning of the show, that he's way too powerful even without taking the serum. So the serum amplified whatever strength he already had. So the only reason he's forging this new shield is because he thinks he's still Captain America. It's more of a personal statement than a shield. Next week is the final episode of the show, and I can already guarantee it's gonna be one hell of an ending. But please keep your expectations in limits. We already got our big cameo, and Steve Rogers is definitely
probably not coming back from the moon. But despite that, the finale will be epic. We'll get Falcon and the Winter Soldier fighting John Walker, who'll get together to fight the Flag Smashers, who'll get together to fight the Power Broker. So there's gonna be hell lot of storytelling, which is never a bad thing as an audience. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 5 at point two epic speed. I hope I managed to give you lads some details that you missed in your first viewing. If I did, then please give me a thumbs up and grab the subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then, I, I am Captain America. Shut up, bitch!